everyone. May you be blessed in Jesus' name. Our topic today is overcoming grief and loneliness. Overcoming grief and loneliness. Number one problem people face today is grief and loneliness. People encounter major losses in their lives and sadly many never get over them. When tragedy occurs and the hurt seems unbearable, certain seems an opportunity to try to bring a family or an individual into permanent bondage. The death of a loved one, divorce or serving of a close relationship can cause grief and most people go through a grieving process. The key to victory is understanding the difference between a normal balanced grieving process and a spirit of grief that will try to attach itself to the hurting person. One helps the grieving person get better with the passing of time. The other causes him to get worse and sink deeper and deeper into the pit of despair. I believe one of the reasons why people, especially Christians, get into bondage during these trying times is lack of understanding about the grieving process. This process is a succession of events that may occur in a person's life when something or someone that means a lot to them is suddenly no longer there. Obviously, everyone doesn't experience the same thing to the same degree. But we do have emotions that can be wounded and brushed and must be healed. Healing is a process that God walks his children through step by step unless he performs a miracle. Shock and deny are two of the first things a person may encounter when tragedy occurs. Actually, God uses them to protect us from devastation. To illustrate, consider an but I want to illustrate this. Consider an automobile shock observer. They are designed to caution the vehicle from unexpected bombs in the road. Without them, the car will fall apart from the violent blows encountered during its travels. People are often the same way. We are traveling on the road of life. And most of the time, we are not expecting bombs or portals. So when they suddenly show up, we are not ready for them. The Holy Spirit our God-given shock observer cautions the blow until we can rejoice and adapt our thinking to accommodate the sudden change in the ride. Shock and deny are normal if they are temporary. However, they become a major problem if people permanently refuse to face reality and learn how to deal with them. The next thing people often feel is anger at themselves. They begin to think of things they wish they would or would not have done that might have made the situation better or even prevented it altogether. Satan wants us to live with regret. There is no one alive who wouldn't say, I wish I hadn't done that or I wish I had done this. Satan seeks to place blame, intending to throw us into a lifetime of guilt, condemnation and self-hatred. This is why the book of Philippians 3.10, Paul says something. I, I want to read it from the Amplified. He said, I do it as my one aspiration, forgetting what lies behind and standing forward to what lies ahead. The word standing in the Amplified translation tells us that whenever we have to press on, there will be opposition from the enemy. Endings always bring new beginnings. Satan strives to keep us out of the new place that God has prepared. He wants to trap us in the past and cause us to live in permanent misery, God forbid, which is what self-anger and self-blame will do. People may also experience anger at the person who left them, even if they died. There's one of my auntie told me that after uh, my uncle died, she would beat his pillow at night and yell, why did you leave me? Obviously, her intelligence knew he didn't purposely leave her. But her emotions were speaking. Emotions have a voice. When they are wounded, they may react like a wounded animal. Honestly, wounded animals can be quite dangerous and so can wounded emotions if they are followed. 
Grieving people need to know about the grieving process and some of the things they may experience, such as not to be led by painful feelings. When a major loss occurs, this isn't the time for a person to make serious decisions or deal with other issues that may produce anxiety or be emotionally upsetting. Being angry with God is quite common. People frequently ask, if God is good, all-powerful, and full of love for us, why didn't he stop the thing that caused the pain? This is where Satan seeks to build a wall between God and the hurting person. He seizes the opportunity to say, God isn't good, and he can't be trusted. However, we know according to the word of God, the truth is not in Satan. He's a liar. And the father of lies in the book of James chapter 1 from verses 12 to 13 says blessed happy to be envied is the man who is patient under trial and stands up under temptation for when he has stood the test and been approved he will receive the that is the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted from God, for God is incapable of being tempted by evil, and himself tempts no one. Verse 17 goes on to say, Every good gift and every perfect that is free, large, full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all, all that gives light. Amen. In other words, God is good and he cannot be anything else. Furthermore, he isn't one way one time, another way another time. He doesn't change. He is good and that's the way he is. But what about the original question? Since God is good and all-powerful, why didn't he stop this thing before it brought all the hurt and pain? To be honest, these are questions we don't have completely insufficient answers for. First, First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 says no i know in part that is we are imperfect trust will always require us to accept unanswered questions we want answers to everything but we must come to the place where we are satisfied to know the one who knows and place our trust in him being mad that god is foolish because is the only one who can bring the needed help and comfort to the grieving or bereaved person. People also get angry with the devil. This is normal and even good if the anger is properly expressed. The only way to repay the devil for hurt and devastation in our personal lives is to forget him and just trust in Jesus Christ. Because the, the book of Romans 12, 21 says, Overcome the evil with good. Amen. So people experiencing tragedy often go through stages of emotional expressions. Okay. So whenever you are into loneliness and into grief, please, prayer is your answer. Keep on praying. Keep on talking to God. He will make a way for you. Do not lose hope. If you are hurting right now, due to a loss in your life, I want to tell you that a new beginning is in front of you. You may go through some things that you will never understand, but trust God to work them out for your good. What certain intends for your harm, God can turn around for your good. And I know with the word of God we have had now, the Lord Almighty will see you through. We see everybody through in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for coming to Wisdom TV Nigeria.